it's your misfortune and none of my own. Yippee ki yi get along, you little dog. You know that the ferry will be your new home. And now for the adventures of Lightning Jim. There's the bridge just ahead, Bill. If we make that, we're safe. Yeah, if we make it. And if we deliver this coal to the bank, we'll have got the first pack train past the bandits in a long time. That's them. Get down behind your animals, men. We're going to shoot it out with them. They'll kill the rest of you if you try to hold out any longer. I guess you're right, Charlie. They're murdering Kyle. Hey, hold it, men. Hold it. All right. Move back and keep your hands up. We're coming down after the gold. No period in history has more dramatically lent itself to romance than the years during which the frontiers of our country were being pushed farther and farther toward the Pacific coast. Westward, the star of empire took its way. But the story of its ascendancy is not one of romance alone. Wild disorder and bold recklessness rode the plains and hills of the Old West. And hard on the heels of these ran the wolves of banditry and murder. To battle this lawlessness, Uncle Sam deputized only men of proved courage and integrity. And of all those who appear large upon the fading picture of heroism, none can claim greater stature than United States Marshal Lightning Jim Whipple and his faithful deputy, Whitey Larson. In tonight's story, we find these two fearless agents of justice investigating a series of baffling holdups which have occurred with alarming frequency near the thriving little city of Painted Rock. Lightning Jim and Whitey are in the midst of an interview with the president of the local bank. And you say, Jeffries, all these robberies have taken place in that gorge just before you get to the bridge. That's the spot, Lightning. And it's a perfect setup for the bandits, too. Dang, bless their ornery hide. You are you right there, Mr. Jeffries. Lightning and me was out there this morning. By golly, I tell you, there must be a tossing place to stand the slopes of that gorge where them TV and Yeagers can hide off. Yeah. What's more, they can keep a perfect bead on everybody along the trail below. Well, Jeffries, if these robbers are getting the information on the gold shipments from someone working in your bank, like you seem to think, I got a little plan that ought to get us somewhere. Well, I certainly hope so, Lightning. Well, here's my plan. You tell every man connected with the bank that I've ordered the good luck mining outfit to go ahead and ship the gold. Yes? Tell them the gold will be on its way tonight. That would bring it in here about uh, midnight Friday. But Lightning... We can't get any men to bring gold through that gorge by day, much less after dark. <laughs> there won't be no gold, Jeffries, or any pack train, for that matter. You're just to say there'll be. Oh, then whichever one of my men is selling the bank secrets will tell the bandits, is that it? Yo, and we'll be out there waiting to introduce ourselves to them, eh, yeah, like... No, Whitey, but we won't know which side of the gorge they'll attack from. The way I figured was this. Long about dark... Jeffries can tell his employees the truth. It'll only be natural for the guilty man to rush straight out to warn the robbers of the trap. So we'll just tail him and get the whole gang. No, Thunder, no. Back. Back, boy. There. Now. Now up, Thunder. Up, boy. That's it. Now hold it. 
Mr. Willikers. Hey, mister. How do you teach a horse to do things like that? <laughs> well, hello there, Sonny. Where'd you come from? I was just passing by. Yeah? When I saw you putting your horse through those stunts, I stopped to watch. Hey, how can you ever teach a horse to do things like that? Oh, oh shucks. It's easy to teach thunder anything, ain't it, old boy? <laughs> Seems like he's quicker to learn than most folks is. Why, well, I bet he can count higher than you can. I bet he can't. I can count as high as there is numbers. Steve taught me. I can add, too. Well, no, that's, uh, that's pretty smart. But so can thunder. He can? Yes, sir. All right. Thunder, how much is three and two? <laughs> See, he can't do it. You were only fooling. <laughs> no, wasn't fooling. But you see, I have to tell him, bud. He won't do it for nobody else. Come on now, Thunder. How much do three and two make? Three and two, boy. He whiz. <laughs> what to tell you? <laughs> Good boy, yes, he was. He never did right. He said just like me. Steve can make me catch on to anything right off. But when I went to school back in Philadelphia, couldn't seem to learn fast at all. So, you lived in Philadelphia before you come out here, huh? I could tell by your lingo you were from back east somewhere. What's your name? Terry Vincent Wesley Foster. Finney for short. What's yours? Well, well, I got a proper tag, too. Of course, it ain't as impressive as yours, but folks generally call me Jim. Sometimes, uh, Lightning Jim. Not Lightning Jim, the U.S. Marshal? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Willikers, what Steve was talking about you only this morning. He said you were the smartest marshal there is. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I guess that's pretty high praise. I'm afraid it's a little exaggerated, though, son. Tell me, uh, who's Steve? He's my brother. He's cashier at the bank. Oh, is he now? From the way you talk, I reckon you don't think much of him, do you? I do so. Why, Steve's the best man in the whole world, and the smartest, too. <laughs> well, what about your father? I thought most boys figured the fathers were the best men. I don't know about that. He... I don't have any father. Oh, that's too bad. So you're an orphan, eh, son? No. Being an orphan means you don't have any father or mother. I have a mother. She's back east now, but she's coming out here soon. She said in her last letter she'd try to get here for my birthday. It's next month, you know. I'll be nine years old. Nine? Why, well, I thought you was just a little shaver. I know. I am small for my age. That's because I've been sick so much. You sick? Well, you look healthy enough to me. I'm not sick. Well, not anymore, I mean. Sure you ain't. See, that's why Steve took the job at the bank out here in Painted Rock. So I could grow strong and be like the other fellas. I have, too. Just feel this muscle. Wait till I roll up my sleeve. All right. Hey, Vinny, Mrs. Wilkins has been looking all over for you. Come on, it's almost supper time. Oh, Steve, come over here. This is Lightning Jim, and I've been talking to him a long time. Mr. Lightning? This is my brother. Glad to meet you, Steve. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to meet you, Marshal. Well, uh, come along, Timmy. But I want to show Lightning and Jim a muscle, Steve. <laughs> Better run along, Sonny. It's my dinner time, too. You can show me that muscle some other time. All right. Come back again, and I'll make Sonny do some more tricks for you. <laughs> That night at a deserted shack some distance from the town, the bandits discuss with Steve Foster the news that the young cashier has just brought. Well, uh, so the good luck mine is ship mapped all, eh, Steve? Yes. The pack train's starting tonight. But I'm telling you, Harper, you better keep your hands off of it. These marshals will get you sure. Oh, yeah? Well, uh, get on with the rest of the news, Steve. We'll take care of them law badges. Yeah, they'll be out of the way when the time comes, Steve. Are you... You aren't planning to drill them? No, Steve. We're reserving the rough stuff for that precious little brother of yours. But you said you'd leave Vinny alone if I kept giving you information from the bank. Well, we ain't a go to bother the kid, Steve, as long as you play straight with us. But we ain't figuring to have no slip-ups, you understand? <laughs> yeah, I'll say we ain't. Darn yeah. right we ain't. Now, uh, what else do you know, huh? I, I don't know anything more except that... Mr. Jeffries told us we'd have to stay at the bank tomorrow night. He said the gold would probably get there about midnight. Midnight? Hey, what are you trying to do, Steve? Give us a drop across? Hey, wait a minute. You know well as us that no mining outfit's going to ship through that gorge after dark, Steve. What are you up to? Now, wait a minute. Hold on, man. Hold on. Uh, you see, old man Jeffries told you this, Steve? That's what he told everyone, Harper. He said the marshal figured no robbers would suspect the gold was coming through that gorge at night. 
Anyhow, they'd be on hand to help guard it. Uh, don't sound good to me, Harper. Mm, I, uh, I think you're wrong, Spike. You know, uh, this here goes with a lot of things I've heard about Light and Jim. They say that he's long on doing the unexpected. Well, bringing the gold in at night sure is unexpected enough. That's the way it struck me, too, men. But I think it'd be better to let this load come through. Then the marshals will leave town and you can go after the next shipment, same as always. Lightning Jim and his deputy aren't just a couple of small-town sheriffs, you know. Yeah, Steve's right, Hopper. Maybe we better... Well, uh, what's the matter, Spike? You gone yellow? Mm. <laughs> Looks like we better hightail into town and get Spike a couple of petticoats for him. Uh, yeah, now, wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute now. Yeah. Wait a minute now. Shut up, Ross. You too, Spike. Fighting amongst ourselves ain't going to get us nowhere. Now, listen... You remember that uh, red-skin Indian Joe that helped us uh, down in Smithfield one time? Sure, I know what you mean. Sure. Well, listen. He's operating around these parts now. I seen him in town yesterday. Yeah? Now, listen. He was admiring that uh, big black horse of lightning, Jim. <laughs> I just got me an idea. <laughs> I think we'll make that red-skin a proposition. <laughs> Better hurry up and finish your breakfast, Whitey. See, see, Lightning, look. Where? Look at the calendar. Look at the date on it. Friday the 13th. <laughs> you ain't a little bit superstitious by any chance, are you, Whitey? Say, no, what if I am? You can't blame a fella for wishing we'd pick some other day to go after these tough gold robbers we're gunning for tonight, by golly. <laughs> well, let's hope the bad luck works on the bandits instead of us. Canyon we are in. Uh, Hector's Canyon, uh, remember it. We, we just come in the only opening that's got. That's right. My mind was on thunder. Well, come on in. We got that even red skin sure now. No, yes, the men the lightning. Huh? Them Indians, they know every inch of this country. And that thief, he wouldn't have come in here without the reason, I tell you. You mean it's a trap? Well, uh, that looks heavy to me, lightning. You're right, buddy. Plum lost my head over losing thunder. Put him up now, Marshal. Yes, and you two, Swede, we got you covered. All right. We got him up. Uh, what do you want with us? Thought maybe you'd like to make us a little visit, eh, Marshal? You and your deputy here. Get the guns there, Luke. Yes, I'll get now, them. you law badgers, get a move on you. And don't try to make a break for it either. Because me and the boys are keeping you covered. Now, come on, get going there. Well, I, I hate to see I told you so, Lightning. But I just can't help reminding you that it's Friday the 13th. Yes, the old superstition of bad luck seems to have descended upon Lightning Jim and Whitey with a vengeance. Will it continue to work against them as the day goes on? And what will become of Thunder? We shall find out in part two, which follows immediately. Now for part two of the adventures of Lightning Jim. At the robber's hideout, Harper and his gang, jubilant over the success of their ruse to capture Lightning Jim and Whitey, 
are planning an attack upon the pack train they believe is to bring gold through the gorge that night. Undisturbed by any suspicion that the plan outlined to Steve Foster by the president of the bank is false, the bandits are confident of securing the entire shipment of the Good Luck Mining Company. <laughs> hey, fellas. <laughs> Did you hear what that sweet deputy said Friday the 13th? <laughs> well, it's sure been an unlucky day for him and Lightning Jim, all right. Yes, and for Steve, too, if you yes. ask me. Say, hey, Harper, yeah. what did Steve do when you told him we'd nab the kid? Yeah, yeah, tell us about it, Harper. <laughs> I bet he was scared, wasn't he? <laughs> you bet he was. <laughs> I told him, and I says, uh, we're going to take good care of the kid for the present. Now, uh, if the hold-up night goes through all right, we'll turn him loose pronto. But if anything should just happen to go wrong... <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that'll keep him in hand, eh, Harper? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Steve's plump daft over the kid. He won't do nothing that might get us in trouble now. Hey, Harper. Mm. Uh, here comes the redskin after that there horse of the marshals. Couldn't handle that black devil this morning, so I left him out in the corral to cool off a bit. Uh, I sure don't envy him none, having to tame that wall-eyed son of Satan. Well, that fool critter almost killed himself trying to smash Joe in the sides of that canyon this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's... And it's my belief he won't never be able to handle that horse. But that's no skin off our noses. He wanted a horse, and we had to have the marshal. <laughs> what happens to the animals, no concern of ours. It's a law of badges that's been wearing me. But see, I just cut me an idea. Yeah. Now, it'll take all four of us to pull this job tonight, see? Mm -hmm. So why not get the Indian to stand guard over Lightning and the Swede? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Painted Rock, Jeffries, not knowing that Lightning Jim and Whitey have been captured by the bandits, proceeds with a plan that the marshal outlined on the previous day. All right, men, you can go home now. Uh, but I thought you said we'd have to stay at the bank tonight, Mr. Jeffries. It's only 7 o'clock. Has something happened? Yeah, you said we'd have to be on hand to weigh in and store the gold from the Goodlock Mine. I know, I know, and I'm sorry, men, that I couldn't take you into my confidence about this thing. You see, the marshal, Lightning Jim, thought it'd be better for no one here to know the truth. Then if things went wrong, there couldn't be any suspicion directed towards you. And the fact of the matter is that uh, there won't be any gold shipment. Won't be any gold? Uh, you mean they, they aren't shipping from the mine at all? No, Steve. Marshal's arranged to have a posse meet him out at the gorge about the time the bandits will figure the pack train should come through. He figures they may capture a couple of the robbers, at least. Realizing that Harper and his men, if fired upon by a posse, would assume that he had double-crossed them and might kill Vinny in revenge, Steve mounted at once and rode frantically toward the hideout, hoping to arrive before the gang left for the gorge. When he arrived, he found Indian Joe making another attempt to subdue Lightning Jim's big black horse, Thunder. Hey, Joe! Joe, where's Harper? I don't know, Steve. Boss man, gone. Gone? Well, what'd they do with Vinny, the boy? What'd they do with the boy, Joe? Huh? Boss, take boy with him. Say you no follow or him shoot boy. But I've got to get word to them. The gold isn't coming through, Joe. Do you understand? Better not go. Shoot boy. Boss man say shoot boy if you come. Then you'll have to go on them, Joe. Huh? Joe no go. Boss man hide by big flat rock. No H.C. Joe. Shoot gun pronto. Joe no go. But you'll have to go, Joe. You'll have to warn them. Joe not go. Joe stay here. Watch lawmen in tool shed. In the tool shed? They left the marshals in the tool shed? Uh. Well, uh, I guess I'll go up to the shack and wait for Harper. Guess I can't do any good by going after him. Uh, that good. You wait. Go get shot. <laughs> Dirty redskins. Been whipping thunder again. Hey, oh, oh, 
poor old Thunder. You'll kill him. You'll kill the horse if he, if he keeps that up. Oh, blast it, Whitey. I, I can't budge these ropes. No, no, uh, me neither, Lightning. Uh, that fella Luke sure got us crossed uh, up tighter than a Christmas goose by Galley. Yeah. No use training with these ropes, Whitey. We're just tearing our wrists to pieces. Yeah. And only pulling the knots tighter. The lightning may be a, be a little superstitious yourself uh, after we get out of this mess. Friday the 13th must be awful lucky day for the bandits, though. Lightning? Who's there? Lightning. Who's there? It's me. Steve. Steve Foster. Steve Foster? Yes. I'm going to try to let you loose, Lightning. They've got Vinny, my brother. They'll kill him. You've got to help me. You mean Harper? Harper has your little brother? Yeah. What are they doing with Vinny? What'd they take him for? On account of me, Lightning, I... Oh, they've been making me keep them posted on the gold shipments at the bank. Said they'd kill Vinny if I didn't. Yeah? I did it, Lightning, but... No, they've taken him anyway. And they said they were holding him to make sure I didn't double-cross him. And I didn't. I mean, I, I didn't mean to. I thought the gold was coming through tonight, like... Like Mr. Jeffries told us it would. Now you've got that party going out there, and they'll kill Vinny, sure. Hold on there, Steve. You want to save your brother... You better hurry up and get us out of this shed. We can't do nothing for him laying here with our hands and feet tied up. How can I get you out? The, the door's padlocked and there's no window. See, see, Lightning, that redskin's got the key. That's right, he has. Listen, Steve, you got a gun? Yeah, two of them. I picked them up at the shack before I sneaked down here. But I, I don't know how to shoot, Lightning. I, I, I brought them for you and Whitey. Well, if you do just what I tell you, you won't have to do no more than just pull the trigger. I want you to hide back of this shed and fire one of them pistols. That'll bring the redskin on the run, because he'll think one of us did it some way. As soon as he gets to the door, you pop around and hold a gun on him. Make him unlock the door, free us, and then we'll take care of the rest. But what if he doesn't put his hands up when I tell him to? What, what if he starts shooting? You'll have to risk that, Steve. You want to save your brother, don't you? <laughs> yes, yes, I've got to save Vinny. All right. I'll do it like you said, but... But if anything goes wrong, you... You'll have to get loose somehow. You'll have to save Vinny. Harper and his men will be hiding right under that ledge known as Black Flat Rock. It's on the east side of the gorge. We know where it is, Steve. Go ahead and pull that trigger. Put up your hands, Joe. Uh, uh, Steve, what you do here? Drop that gun, Joe. No. Oh. Oh. Steve. Steve. Steve, you hurt me. He got me right thing. But I got him first. You... You'll have to save Vinny. Big, big flat rock. Steve. Steve. Like, guess he's done for lightning. Yeah. Reckon he is, Whitey. Now what did we do? Well, I guess the same thing we was doing before, Steve. Come. Yes, nothing. Say, Whitey. I think I got it. I think I know how to get us out of here. Thunder. Thunder can get us loose. If that red skin ain't got him fastened up too tight. There he is, he got it. Yo. There he comes. Yo, look at him right. There he is, buddy. Thunder, old boy. I need you. You gotta help me. Now, now, steady there, Thunder. Steady, boy. Steady now. Now, now, kick, Thunder. No, 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 not that way, boy. Come here, Thunder. That's it. Now back up, boy. Back up. That's the idea. Now kick. See, Come on. A kick like Dane. Yeah, man. again, old fella. Steady now. Now kick, boy. Good boy, Thunder. That's the way. Give one more kick like that, and he'll have the whole side of the shed done. Yes, he's powerful, all right. Aren't you, old boy? Now once more, Thunder. Steady, boy. Now steady there. Back up. Back up. Now kick Thunder, kick boy! Yo! That's got it! Yo, he got it! Good boy! Good oh, old Thunder! Lightning. Well, no, he got in, but uh, what are we going to do? You notice that grindstone over in the corner? We're going to use that to saw these ropes from our hands. Yo, but we can't get through that lightning with our ink. They're so trussed up like this. Yeah, we can, Whitey. Thunder will fix that. Now you roll over as close to me as you can get, Whitey. Come Yo. on. Yo, all right, Lightning. Come on, but... now, hurry up. Uh, I, I don't... See what you're trying Keep to going. Do. Yeah, well, you will in a minute. Now listen, I'm going to get Thunder to put his muzzle down here again my shoulder. And when he gets close enough, I want you to grab his bridle between your teeth and hold on like grim death. 
Your light. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, get your light in. Uh, Tony, he, he'll drag me to my feet. Right. All right, then, old boy. How much do you like me? Huh? <laughs> give me a kiss now. Come on, give me a kiss. Yeah. Now get a hold, buddy. Yo, I got it. Got it? Yo, go ahead. All right. All right, now up, Thunder. Up, boy. Up. That's the boy. Yo. Yo, yo we made the light then. No, for that crime stone in the corner. Yeah, good old Thunder. <laughs> Look over there, Lightning. He's to the left of that rock. Yeah, something moving. It's the robbers. All four of them. Yeah. You crawl a little closer, Whitey. When we're near enough, I'll give the word to jump them, Jack. Yo, all right. Let's go. Now, Whitey. Reach for the sky, all of you. Yo, and be quick about the truth. It's a marshal. Right then, Jim. It's from law practice. How in the blue blazes did you get here? That bungling redskin. When I get my hands get on him, Get your guns, I... Whitey. Yo. Harper Indian Joe's past worrying about what you might do to him. Where's that kid? Well, well, he's tied right there alongside the bushes. All right. Now keep him covered, Whitey. I'm going to untie the boy. Yo, sure, right then. Well, kid. Got this gag in so far, you can, can hardly breathe, can you? There now. There you are. There you are. Oh, oh, Mr. Lightning, I knew you'd come. I just know you or Steve would come for me. Well, you can thank Thunder for that, Vinny. And so ends another exciting chapter in the adventures of Lightning Jim, United States Marshal, and his deputy, Whitey Larson.